So as alluded to in the previous lecture, here we're going to focus on something called ketoacidosis. Ketoacidosis simply means we have high levels of ketone bodies inside our blood. Now what causes ketone acidosis? Well, it can be a result of prolonged alcohol consumption, it can be due to malnutrition or starvation, but what we're going to focus on in this lecture is diabetes. So type 1 insulin dependent diabetes can cause ketoacidosis if that diabetes is not regulated. So how does this actually take place? Well, let's suppose we have a diabetic individual and the diabetic individual forgets to take their insulin. What happens? Well, basically, after a meal, we're going to have high levels of glucose inside our blood, a condition known as hyperglycemia. Now, if we don't have any insulin, then that means the liver cannot actually absorb that glucose because remember the insulin is used to upregulate the absorption of glucose into the liver. If we have no insulin, we cannot absorb the glucose. So if we can't absorb the glucose into the liver cells, the hepatocytes, what that means is we're going to decrease the level of oxaloacetate inside our liver cells. Now, why is that important? Well, remember, we need high levels of oxaloacetate to actually use the acetyl coenzyme A that we get from beta oxidation of fatty acids to help, it, to help us generate citrate, the intermediate of the citric acid cycle, and that helps us generate ATP molecules, convert the acetyl coenzyme A ultimately into ATP molecules. Now, at the same time, in our adipose tissue, in our fat cells, the inability of the glucose to be absorbed by these fat cells will stimulate the breakdown of triglycerides into fatty acids. And so these adipose cells will continue dumping these fatty acids into the bloodstream. And these fatty acids will ultimately be absorbed by that liver. So when we increase the levels of fatty acids inside our liver, we're going to essentially increase the levels of acetyl coenzyme A, which comes from the beta degradation of fatty acids. So we have low levels of oxaloacetate in liver cells and high levels of acetyl coenzyme A. And so this process by which we essentially feed the acetyl coenzyme A into the citric acid cycle will be blocked as a result of the low levels of oxaloacetate. So the only pathway that is left for these acetyl coenzyme A molecules is ketogenesis, the production of ketone bodies. So we're going to increase levels of ketone bodies in the liver and they're going to be dumped into the bloodstream. And so we're going to cause something called ketonemia, which is simply elevation of ketone bodies inside our blood as well as ketonuria. So this is the process by which we're going to excrete those ketone bodies via our urine. So remember, we have three types of ketone bodies. We have acetone, we have acetoacetate, and we have D3-hydroxybutyrate. Now acetone is simply a ketone body that cannot be metabolized by our cells and so we're simply going to release it via our breath. And so we're going to get a fruity odor on breath and so physicians can test the breath of individuals to see if they actually have uh, ketoacidosis. Now what about the acetoacetate and D3-hydroxybutyrate? Well these are actually acids. And the pKa value of these two acids is around 4. And what that means is once these two molecules into the bloodstream, they're going to dissociate releasing those H plus ions and that will increase the acidity of the blood. So we see that these two ketone bodies will increase the levels of H plus ions in the blood and that will in turn increase the H plus ion concentration in the tissue. In addition, what will also happen is 
as a result of ketonuria, the release of these ketone bodies in the kidneys, what will happen is osmosis will take place inside the kidneys. And so we're going to release much more water than usual. So on top of increasing the levels of H plus ions in the blood and tissues, we're going to increase the amount of water that we release by the kidneys. So we essentially decrease the volume because we decrease the water content in the blood. We increase the concentration of H plus ions in the blood. And what that does is it causes severe ketoacidosis. And so this can basically damage tissues and cells of our body. For example, it can, it can damage the central nervous tissue, the central nervous cells. And so we see that it's very important for type 1 diabetics to actually regulate their insulin because if they don't regulate their insulin, they're going to basically get ketoacidosis, which can be very, very damaging to the tissues. It can, eat, it can even uh, lead to death. So we see that the takeaway lesson here is in diabetics, type 1 diabetics, if they don't take the insulin, they cannot regulate the absorption of the glucose by these liver cells and by these adipose cells. And so together, this process will lead to an increased levels of ketone bodies inside the blood because the cells of our body will not be able to use the ketone bodies quickly enough. And so we're going to get a buildup of these ketone bodies in the blood leading to ketoacidosis.